Koto and welcome to Auckland Zoo. We are so excited that you can come join us today to be our keeper for the day. Now the team that you'll be joining as our trainee keeper is the ectotherm team and our green one here is an ectotherm. Now an ectotherm means that this species relies on additional things to help regulate the body temperature. Now if you have a look in the habitat you actually see with that green one and we've got this light and heat source up the top here and you can see our lovely male iguana here sitting underneath it. Now he is relying on that heat source to keep his body temperature up. Now if it does get too hot for our green iguana he can move away from that heat source. Uh, we also have a bit of a sprinkler system to help cool down that body temperature. So an ectotherm means they rely on something else to regulate the temperature. Now the green iguana is fabulous, but that is not the animal that we have been looking after today. So you're gonna to have to follow me to find our species today to learn all about this big ectotherm. Here you actually have one of the favorite food sources for the ectotherm that we're going to be focusing on today. It is a prickly pear, they love the flowers on it. We can also take these off remove the spikes there, one of their favourite treats. I wonder if that's a good clue for you, but let's keep going around so we can see them. Okay, so here we are with the species that you'll be focusing on today for your trainee keeper. It is our Galapagos tortoise, the largest tortoise species in the world. So here we have Smiley, one of our male Galapagos tortoises just here. We have four adults, uh, that can go out here and also inside in this humidity controlled uh, habitat. And we also have our four juveniles that are about one year old just inside here. Now your job as a trainee keeper will be to look after all eight of these Galapagos tortoises, but don't worry, we're gonna leave you in the capable hands of some fabulous experts. We're gonna talk to you a little bit about how to care for these giants and uh, good luck with it. We hope you have an amazing day learning about our Galapagos tortoises here at Auckland Zoo. Thanks a lot, Kat. Kia ora tato katoa. Ko konau tukuri tōku ingoa. I'm here at the Galapagos tortoise habitat here at Te Whare Kararehe o Tāmaki Makoto, Auckland Zoo. Now, the Māori name for Galapagos tortoise is Honu Whenua. And you can add a nui on there if you want, or a Galapagos, because they're from Galapagos. Also, nui means big. Whenua meaning land and honu meaning turtle. Big land turtle. Honu Whenua nui. Now, they also do this thing, they protrude their head out. So what that means in Māori is mahunga whedere. Mahunga whedere. Mahunga meaning head and whedere mean to protrude. So a couple of cool phrases and cool names that you can use for our beautiful Galapagos tortoises here at Auckland Zoo. Kia ora, ko nai o toko ingoa, and I'm one of the conservation learning facilitators here at Auckland Zoo. And today we're gonna to learn all about Galapagos tortoises. Before we start, have a look at your KWL chart. Now in that first column, note down everything you already know about these incredible creatures. Once you've figured out what you already know, what are you curious about? Write down any wonderings you have, any curiosities, any questions in that middle column and we'll see if we can answer them together. All right, now we're ready to learn all about Galapagos tortoises. There are different species of Galapagos tortoises, but they all come from the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands are a group of volcanic islands a thousand kilometers off the coast of South America. To get there from Aotearoa, New Zealand, you'd have to go all the way across the Pacific Ocean. Galapagos tortoises like to eat all sorts of grasses and plants. Because here at the zoo, they get their favorite treat of vegetables, fruit, and even flowers. How long could you go without eating or drinking? If you're anything like me, not very long at all. Galapagos tortoises, they can go for a whole year without eating or drinking if they needed to. That's because they have a very slow metabolism and incredible water storage capabilities, unlike us. Here at the zoo though, they get fed regularly. Tortoises don't actually have teeth. Instead, they have the bony outer edge of their mouth that they use to bite off food and mash it up before swallowing. The first thing you probably notice when you see these animals is just how large they are. 
They're not called giant horses for nothing. The largest of these animals can grow up to around two meters long. They are also extremely heavy animals with the males getting up to 250 kilograms and the females around 140 kilograms. When they first hatch though, they only weigh around 100 grams. So they've got a lot of growing to do. Galapagos tortoises have really strong legs. They need big strong legs to lift up their heavy bodies to walk around on the uneven volcanic ground in their habitat. Like other reptiles, these legs are covered in hard scales. These scales protect the tortoise's skin from bumps and scratches. Galapagos tortoises have large, hard, strong shells. These shells are important because it helps keep them safe. Their shells look a bit like rocks, but they're actually made of their bone covered in keratin. These bones of their skeleton are connected to their spine and ribs as part of the skeleton of the tortoise. This means that even though the shells are very, very hard, they're actually really sensitive. The tortoise could feel if a bird landed on its back or even if you stroked it with a feather. Our Galapagos tortoises here at the zoo have dome-shaped shells. This means that their shells are tall and round, a bit like an upside down bowl. Now, this is a really handy adaptation to have if you're living on uneven volcanic rock, because it means if you fall over on your back, it's much easier to self right and get back up on your feet. When you see our Galapagos tortoises, you might see them laying around having a rest. They're not being lazy. This is actually really important for Galapagos tortoises because they're reptiles. They need to lie in the sun to warm up their bodies. This is called basking. Now sometimes people use the word cold-blooded when talking about reptiles. The word we should use instead is ectotherm. So unlike mammals, like us humans who are endotherms, ectotherms need to bask in the sun to warm up their bodies. Kia ora, ko PJ Toku Ingoa. Kapai training keepers, you guys are doing an absolutely fantastic job already, but your job's only just getting started. We can't go home until all of the animals in the zoo have a safe and secure habitat to live in. Different species or different animals are going to require different conditions depending on who they are and where they're from. It's a bit of a tricky job for our keepers to design all the habitats around the zoo. So to help them, they use the five domains of animal welfare. I'm down here at the beginning of our South America rainforest track to highlight some of the important features of our very own Galapagos tortoise habitat. Now you'll notice that these guys have lots of open space out here. Lots of gravelly ground, big rocky boulders, even some shrubs. Just like the volcanic islands that they'd usually be living on out in the wild. It is also important to remember that these guys are absolute giants. So if they are living in a group, they also need a lot of space. Now also out here, there's lots of space for them to sunbathe. Just like Niall mentioned, these guys are ectotherms, they're reptiles. They love to sunbathe and soak up the warmth through their scales. And if they do get a bit warm, there are some little mud wallows for them to cool down into. Now in the wild on the Galapagos Islands where these tortoises are normally found, it stays pretty hot and warm through the entire year. But these tortoises are living here with us in Tamaki Makoto in Aotearoa, and it can get a little bit chilly through our winter months. So it is important that these tortoises can still keep warm like they usually would through this time. Can you think of a clever solution? Well, we've designed this hut here, which acts a little bit like a sauna. It stays hot and humid throughout the entire year. Now the tortoises can get in and out of this hut through some little doors which work a little bit like a giant cat flap, so that they have the choice to come into a warmer environment if they choose to, when it's a bit cooler outdoors. This just allows them to stay nice and warm here at the zoo through all months of the year. This hut also gives our vets and keepers a nice space to undergo health checks, uh, weigh the tortoises and even set up a little tortoise creche for the hatchlings once they come out of their eggs. Now our visitors are a vital part of our zoo so it's crucial that our habitats are designed so that the visitors can see our animals clearly and safely. Now since these tortoises they don't fly or jump, all we really need are fences spaced out just enough so that the tortoises can't squeeze their big giant shells through the poles that way, you can see the tortoises clearly throughout the whole day. If the tortoises do want to come inside on one of the cooler days, the visitors can still see the tortoises nice and clearly through these windows. How cool is that?
Providing animals with optimal welfare at a zoo is about so much more than simply giving them a habitat to live in. It's about providing them with things to do in that habitat as well. So our zookeepers are always hard at work designing and creating what we call enrichment items for our animals to engage with. Now before we give any of these enrichment items to any animal here at the zoo, we need to make sure that it firstly can't hurt them. Secondly, if it's a food item, we need to make sure that it's safe for that animal to eat as well as any other animal that's sharing that habitat and lastly, we need to make sure it's a suitable level for them. Not too difficult, not too easy. We need just the right amount of challenge. Alrighty, trainee keepers, now it's your turn to take this model and use it to help you design your very own training activity for our tortoises, or even a tool to help you weigh them. Okay, I'll leave you to it. Kia ora tamariki ma, ko Catherine toku ingoa. You've already heard about how Galapagos tortoises are found in the wild on the Galapagos Islands. In fact, they are endemic to these islands, which means they are not found in the wild anywhere else in the whole world. These are extra special reptiles that should be carefully protected. But unfortunately, there are many threats to wild Galapagos tortoises and their homes. Things like habitat loss, introduced pests, and climate change. Does that sound familiar? You probably already know that there are very similar threats facing our endemic reptile species here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A long time ago, Galapagos tortoises didn't have any threats at all until certain species were introduced onto the Galapagos Islands. Animals like cats, rats and dogs will prey on the tortoises' hatchlings and eggs as well, while species like the pigs and the goats will compete with them for their food. Another threat to the Galapagos tortoise is habitat loss. As the number of humans living on the Galapagos Islands continues to increase, there is less space for the tortoises to live and also fewer places for them to find their food. Luckily, there are many amazing conservation projects happening to help restore the Galapagos Islands wild spaces and wildlife, and this is helping the populations of Galapagos tortoises to slowly recover. On this positive note, how amazing is it that Auckland Zoo has the Galapagos Tortoise Breeding Program? This is due to the dedication and commitment of our ectotherm keepers to research and study this species. Did you know that the temperature of the sand that the tortoises eggs are laid in will determine whether they hatch as a boy or a girl? This is really similar to other reptile species like the tuatara that we have here in Aotearoa. Now another very important part of being an ectotherm keeper is to help look after species that we might have in our own backyards. While we don't have giant Galapagos tortoises roaming around in Aotearoa, we do have some other very special reptiles that face very similar threats, so it's really important for us to know how we can help to protect them. Now you're going to have a go at making a tracking tunnel to see whether you have any friends or foes in your backyard at home or at school. Have fun! Well, congratulations on completing your Keeper for the Day training for our Galapagos tortoises. We hope you've had an amazing time learning all about this giant ectotherm. Well, until next time, kakite.